and welcome to Avon Mail from Bristol to the Big Red Truck Tour. The Milwaukee Big Red Truck. Loads of tools, power tools, hand tools. Let's get in there and have a good look. This is the lighting and the laser area. As you can see, there's a whole array of different things going on from what looks like roof rack lighting for your vans and your trucks, all the way through to your massive, great big site lighting. We've got tape measures, levels, you name it, shake a stick at it, they've got it here. The M12 section here, we've got everything from SDS drills, which are very cute and tiny. Battery's flat on this one, let's try and grab one that's got a working battery in it. So very standard, forward, backwards, uh, you've got a drill and a hammer and just a drill. Very light, very portable, M12 batteries. Moving on, we've got uh, just the normal drills, if I can get that out, yeah there we go. Normal drill, that's very light as well, very useful. Again, it's got drill, hammer on it, two speed function, torque settings and a built-in belt clip right in a very good place for uh, very useful very well balanced impact driver uh, nice little dial on the top there to tell you what's going on with it it's different speed functions again built-in belt clip Let's see how that fits on there that's really comfortable. Probably one of the best, best position for clips I've seen on a drill so far, or an impact driver even, in this case. There is a massive range of different tools here. You've really got to get down here to, to really appreciate what they've got on offer. Uh, just run one at an, random here. This looks like an impact driver. The sockets, yep. Obviously, you've been, uh, maybe they use it on the truck here to set up because it's a uh, a bit better battered around the edges, but fantastic little tools these. Almost makes me want to change my uh, my system over. So another version of it, the fuel ver brushless version. Again with a chuck on the end of it for your sockets. And this one here I think is the multi-tool. This one has interchangeable heads, work out, just pop it off, change it to a different head. I assume it's got like a, an angle one that goes on there amongst other things. Again, dual speed, forward and reverse on the buttons. Battery gauge on the side. I assume there's another tool that can slot in there. I can't actually see anything here at the moment. But, uh, no clip on this one though, no belt clip on this one. Maybe that's where it goes on there. They just keep getting smaller and smaller. I mean, look at the size of that one. Or that that just doesn't have, that doesn't have the battery in it. And then looking underneath a bit lower down, we've got a whole array of different multi-tool type devices. There's a side drill, um, another side drill with a with a ch quick release chuck on it for your drill bits, screwdriver bits. Angle ratchets, socket sets, socket. Almost like a battery version of the air tools that you get of these. It just keeps going on and on and on. And here we got a rivet gun, which I can't get out, unfortunately. We've got silicon guns, different types of silicon guns. I don't actually know what that one is. I can't get it out to have a look, unfortunately. It's all taped in. Looks like some... Even got cameras. So all of these have been strapped down, presumably for the transport. There's been a truck these things get all messed around with. I have, don't actually know what that is. Looks like some kind of pipe... Oh, there we go, it's a pipe cutter. Uh, if you look in there, it's got a, it's got a wheel in there 
obviously for cutting pipes. Um, couldn't tell you what size, what does it say on here? Uh, minimum of 12 mil and a maximum of 28 mil. I guess there must be a, yeah, there we go, look at that. That could be a plumber's best friend there, right there. <coughs> and jigsaws. The miniature angle grinders. You definitely do not want to put your fingers in there. Obviously for cutting uh, various pipe work, it does have a big sign on there saying do not steal cut, do not cut steel. Um, but I guess you could probably put, uh, do your copper pipe, the plastic pipe in there. Um, seems to be very much a lot of plumbing tools um, around here, which is great. Uh, not, not just for chippies and electricians alike. So here we've got a uh, recip saw, obviously there's no blade in there, but that, that's really nice and comfortable, good in your hand, good weight. These batteries are tiny, it's fantastic. Six amp, six amp hours out of a tiny little battery like that. Put some other brands to shame. So we've got metal cutters, obviously there'll be a blade that runs circular in there, uh, like a hacks, hacksaw blade. Uh, got a chop saw, circular saw, sorry. And a lot of tools which I've never actually seen before, so I don't know what I don't actually know what that is to be honest. If you know what it is, please let me know. I'd love to love to find out what that is. More tools that look like they're for, designed for mechanics because they've all kind of got the the lever that the old the old um, the air system uses. They have the ratchet handle on them. We've got the sanders, like a little Dremel drill. It's yet another tool that I have no idea what it does. Oh, it's a, it's a heat gun, solderer, is it? It's a shame they don't say what it is, but it's 12 hours, it's 400 degrees, so that must be an electric heat gun, so we're soldering. I'd like to give that a go on uh, on some pipe work. I saw a recent video I did, I made a right disaster when I had a go at plumbing, so maybe I need to get one of yeah. these. It's more for industrial. Uh, yeah. Uh, when they're doing plumbing and pipe work when in factory settings. Yeah. Like that. yeah, you wouldn't, get, you wouldn't see that in a domestic yeah. setting, really, would you? No. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a case of laying your pipe across here, wrapping the chain around the pipe, and just lock, locks in down, yeah. So it just locks in there and then tighten up using this. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's just a, a quick tight knot yeah. to lock it in place. Mm. Uh, if I bring that down so that it's actually here, you'll, you'll be able to see it better. So at the moment we can take the, the chain in and out of there. We but tighten it up and it just locks it in. Up, oh, tighten it up, not loosen it off. <laughs> so as soon as we tighten it up, and it's usually just one turn. Yeah. And then... That's it, it's not going to go anywhere, is it? it yeah, so it's not going anywhere. I could pick it up with that and... Not of any problem. That's so very cool. It just secures the pipe so that yeah. it makes it easier. Yeah. Do Morky do a lot of industrial tools? Hey, we're very, very yeah. good on industrial yeah. tools. Uh, that's where our heritage really is. Right. Uh, mechanical, uh, industrial, uh, utilities, all, all things. things yeah, like I've that. noticed you've got a lot of tools over there that look like the old style air tools yes. with, with, the, with the blade handles on them for turning them on and off. Yeah, yeah that's really cool. Uh, that's mainly uh -huh. where our heritage is, but yeah. we're expanding into areas where we're not getting as much traditional strength, mm. uh, but we're improving and picking up a uh, business lift right set. Yeah, yeah, so heading more towards the domestic sector and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we, we try to tend uh, to focus more on the industrial and company level, mm -hmm. uh, although Every single tool we manufacture can go right down to a basic DIY if they yeah. want to, if they wanted yeah. that level of tool. Mm. Yeah, so the M12, so that nice petite kind of... One of my favourite uh, ranges of tools. That's great, I've just been having a look at those. You just yeah. pick it up and it's like, I haven't I'm not even got it in my hand if it feels so light. It's so unassuming. Yeah. And then you try it and you use it and you think, that's the power that you used to get on 24-volt tools. Yeah. 
and it's in such a small compact mm. like airfoil. On to clothing, we've got heated body warmers and jackets, various different styles running throughout. Must get one of those before I go home, it's bleeding cold here, I should be wearing it right now. So coming back underneath here, we've got a vacuum in the corner down there, we've got blowers, we've got um, another small vacuum, so we've got a little radio, another radio, air compressor, was that a grease gun? I think it's a grease gun. That's the, uh, is that an air compressor? Yep, yeah, that's an air compressor on there. We've got um, drainage unblockers, something hiding down the back there, which I can't tell what it is. It might be part of these systems here. And then we move on to the M18s, with a very large SDS drill. Cool, blimey. Now that is a beast of a drill. Look at that, 12 amp hour battery, 18 volt. I've never, that's the first time I've actually seen a 12 amp hour battery, especially in this size. A little gauge on the top of the battery on these, really good. This is really heavy, but I bet it's got some real balls. So I'll certainly do a few core, core, few core drills with that. Cool. Well, it does weigh quite a bit. <laughs> it's quite a lot, in fact. Make sure it's all strapped up. And then you've got the little, all the baby brothers all the way down. Throw it there as well. All the way down to uh, the dinky little thing right here, which just seems to be a slightly larger version than the M12 version. We've got dust extractors, which attach to the SDS drills. So the drill fits on the back, the blade goes, the drill bit goes through here, and obviously sucks all the dust back into the vacuum little disc cutter here so they quite literally do everything Let's grab one at random impact driver dual speed combi drill hammer action dual speed manual forward and backwards actions torques and a decent belt clip which hangs really comfortably Double clip to pull the batteries in and out of. The list just goes on and on and on. Another impact driver, it's got a little clip on the side there for spare bits. Now that is a big, big side angle drill. I won't take it out because it looks all in there, but it's got a big chuck on the side there. It's a manual one though, it's not a quick release. Um, Pretty hefty as well, so it's got to be pretty heavy duty. I don't know what I'd actually use that one for. Another grease gun. Now this is probably what all you car mechanics would be rather like, rather use, getting your, your nuts undone and your car tyres, etc. Very, very bright LED. I just had to put a thumb over it, so I just blinded myself with it. Pretty hefty weight, but I bet that'll do uh, get a few tyres on and off your car, amongst other things. <laughs> Much more industrial sized versions up here. I'd love to see what size nut goes on the end of these. And again, we've got another, another hacksaw cutter. Blade obviously so it goes around, cut for your, your tip, for your metal that way. Circular saws again. That's really nice and light. That's a good hook. I've not seen a circular saw with a hook on it as yet. Might be some around that I've missed, but that's certainly the first I've seen so far. Lovely action on that. Not designed to sit on a track, unfortunately. Maybe they do another version that does that, but yeah, it's really nice, really nice feel to that, nice weight. 
slightly smaller version of the same thing. Yeah, again, just a flat plate on there, no track vent for the vacuum when they dust. And in fact, if you look at them both, they're both opposite way around. I don't know what the purpose is of that. I can't really say they're left or right-handed because, well, you could easily leave way around, couldn't you? But, yeah. Now that is more like it. That's a track track saw. Saw. Which there we go. Take it the right way. Open it up and change the blade on it. Dust extraction, etc. And I've got fun putting it back together again now. With Also help with removing any debris that might get stuck in there. Good solid handle on that. Help balance it all off. Angle adjustment for your depth. Depth adjustment even. Is there an angle adjustment on there? Can't actually know. There doesn't seem to be an angle adjustment. So it's literally just height. Pillar drills. Wow. Breaky, breaky. Whole different array of disc cutters right across here. And loads and loads and loads of them, all different shapes and sizes. Too many to even start looking at, really. I mean, how many does one person really need? <laughs> all of them, I hear you say. Nail guns, first and fix, rail gu nail guns. Um, multi tools, multi tools over here. See if I grab one of these. Lovely, nice and nice and light. Trigger on the bottom, which I assume. I'm going to have to pass on this one. Very little vibration on that, and that's wow. How many speeds as well? Twelve, twelve speeds, and that's on there. I don't know if you can. You can hear how quiet that actually is and how little vibration that actually is in this machine. It, it's incredibly, it's just incredible. It's just a shame I can't figure out how this works. I'm sure one of you uh, out there will let me know. We have a plasterboard gum, you know, drywall screws. No, these are for <laughs> pipe fixings. Uh, we you, you actually crimp the uh, the connections together. You know, cutters here. And crimpers. I don't actually know what that one is. I'd love it if somebody could actually tell me what this one's for. Lots and lots more jigsaws, all different shapes and sizes, all for different jobs. Orbit sander, two of them, nice little dinky handheld one here, and nicely weighted. With a dust, dust catcher on the back there. Yeah, especially it's like, because they're always something you like use and then put down right next to you. And it does, and normally they're sat there spinning away, aren't they? So is this a sander or a polisher? We could use it for both of them. Well, if you have any more questions about yeah. that, you know. Okay. Toy landscapers and um, tree surgeons out there. There's a whole different array of chainsaws up here. I'm going to leave them up there because I don't want to start playing with these big boys, these, these things here. It's like, and these hedge trimmers. Yeah, we've got hedge trimmers underneath here as well. More grease guns. That's a, that's a bit more like my size. I could spend all day playing with a toy like that. <laughs> I'd probably demolish my entire house if I had that. So just go around cutting stuff all day with it. There's even a little compressor down here. 
more garden tools, we've got str strimmer attachments, uh, long arm cutters, and then you get onto your PPE with the, or, uh, all your gloves, dust masks, goggles. It's true portability, you can mm. take it anywhere you want. Everything that fits on the table secures underneath it as well. Oh, great. So if we were taking the, let me take lots of yeah, I need a pair of those. <laughs> it's good for keeping my hands warm at the moment. Yeah, uh -huh. If we were to take the fence off here, yeah. that just lifts off. But that, if you want, if you're transporting that. it, it would then attach. So, if you're transporting it about, oh, I see. That's cool. And you got the guide as well, yeah. which is the the, um, the push stick? stick. Yeah, hockey stick. Uh -huh. So again, once that's in there, it's just a case of locking it off. And, and it all just it folds up. Is, yeah. mm. uh, same with the, uh, mm. the guard. Again, that'll fix on under, underneath. Down here, sorry. Okay, cool, here. yeah. So it just fix on under here. So you've got a nice flat surface and you just chuck it in the back of a van and forget about it. And, and to release this is very, very simple. You've just got a lever down here, which just pulls up. And then I want one. <laughs> and again, I want the wall. Put, put it on when you're setting up. Push it down, and then put it back down place. again. Yeah. It's locked in place as well. So it's on the 18 range, M18 range. M18 range, yeah. yeah. So fill the fill the cordless. Mm. Uh, we have a, a scissor stand at the bottom uh, to support it, and and that's all totally separate. Uh, and again, you've got a locking facility here. Whilst it's on the truck, we have got cable ties on it. Just yeah, to keep yeah. It on there. But it's a locking facility, so it only really. Because you can just lift the whole truck. It's ready to lift straight off as well. Is it pack out? Of, it, um, it's not pack out compatible. No. no. Uh, it's a bit too big to fit onto pack out. They may okay, look yeah. at it. Maybe something to look at in, in, in years future. to come. Mm. It would definitely make sense. That just locks on there, so it keeps it all attached to the sand. And then that just folds up and you yeah. put it in the back of the van as well. Massive, great big off button, which is just what you yep. want, isn't it? So it's, mm. put, it's mm. quite simple, pull on, so that's it. That yeah, be it finish on. and then and you then get it with your knee or... Yeah. Uh, mm. If I get a battery, we'll plug a battery in and we'll let you hear it running as well. There's a whole range of different bits and pieces going on here. We've got knives, we've got flat bits, we have spade bits, sorry, we've got sockets. We've got torque drivers, we've got Phillips head drivers, we've got jigsaw blades, we've got rip cell blades, switch blades of various different types, the, the quick quick release fast back, um, sandy knife, sandy style knives, masonry bits, more the SDS bits, we've got the the pack the packs with various different drill bits in them. It just keeps going on and on this place. And I've just spotted one of my favourite things, which is the pack out system. I think that's really, really good this system. <sighs> all interconnects, the whole lot. The clips, it's all IP65 um, waterproof related. We've got everything from um, these little um, boxes out at the top, these crates, and they just come off, clip on. You've got your bit boxes, which you can change all of those um, boxes around to uh, make them ideal for whatever you want to put in them. And they it, it, it just literally stick it on there and clip it in. And you can just roll the whole lot into the site, leave what you don't need in the van, just take what you need. Love it. I can't get enough of this stuff. In fact, I'm probably going to get some more of these myself in a little while. So, so it's got a double fence on it as well, which is yes. great. So you can slide the timber down either side. And yes. Uh, so that all mm. of the side that exactly. needs to rise, rise. Road rise, yeah. It's yeah. been just doing that, that nice introductory stuff. One, it means that this side always stays completely flat. A mm. uh, battery just goes in here and it is compatible with any of our 18 volt batteries uh, from 2 amp right up to 12. I can't believe how small those 12 amp hour batteries are. <laughs> and it's not actually that heavy either. No. Especially if you're using a tool that's situated on the, on the floor, it's not, it's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, mm. If you're using 
a heavier, uh, sorry, a lighter tool, and you'd use it above head height, mm. then you yeah. would notice it, yeah. But then, if you were using a lighter tool, then you would think you would use a lighter battery to go with it, wouldn't you? Because yes. you wouldn't you wouldn't need that power to behind it. So. Some people always want to go with the, the biggest battery they can get. Yeah. Uh, it, as you say, it depends on the tool that you're using. Mm. Uh, there's no point in having a light compact tool and then putting a big massive battery on it. No. No. So my, my setup I've got personally myself at the moment, and I only went down that route because the person who taught me had that manufacturer. And when you're a nipper, you haven't got any money, have you? So you just you just buy as you go. As so I was nicking his batteries and all the rest of it. And but as I've in, as I've increased the, the system over the years, I found that what I've got now, I'm more than happy just to use the two and a half amp hour batteries. Keeps the weight down because it only takes 20 minutes to charge up. So and it takes longer for me to kill that battery than it does to charge it. So that, that's what. Rather than having a 12 amp hour on the end of it. Because it's speed the charging now as well. Most most chargers are charging around about six amps. Yeah. Uh, per hour. So mm. if you're putting a two amp battery on it, it's charged in 20, 22 minutes. Yeah. Uh, because the, the last part mm. of the charge is always a trickle charge just mm. to condition the battery. Yeah. Well. And they're so intelligent, the chargers as well. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know if you noticed there, when I've put this uh, fence back on here, there's actually two positions to go here and here. Yeah. And what that does is it extends your cutting distance. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Yeah. So if we put it on. This one here, and we'll lock it in place. We use the, the top scale. Oh, uh, okay, so yeah, good, double scales on there. Up to 500, so 500 mils, 50 centimeters, 500 yeah, yeah. mils. But if we move it to the next position out, we'll then get okay, gain the extra distance. Cutting capacity. Fantastic. Okay. So yes, it just gives you that extended bit. Uh, and it also helps uh, using the outside one when you want to. Oh, no, that's nice. When you cut up close <laughs> the fence. I'll show you something else about the fence as well. So, when we're bringing that back in just now. There we go. When we're bringing that back in just now, that's as close as you can get to the fence. Okay, okay yeah. So, that's giving you 50 mil of cutting between the, the blade and the fence. That's good, okay. yeah. Uh, when it's in the, the forward position, that's where we would use this if you're doing small, thin material. Yeah. Because you can't get it. Yeah, you can't right get that past the gear. Yeah. So if we bring that back in. Because It now means that we can get right up to the blade. There's no blade on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I can now get right up to the blade without so, damaging so you, the fence. So you can cut millimetre thick? Yes, yeah. You can cut mm. right down to just the thickness of the blade. Right, cool. Yeah. Uh, so on this one, it's usually uh, it's usually a two mil millimetre blade that's on yeah. it. So is there, is there a stop to prevent you from actually taking the guide into the blade? Uh, it would stop right on the blade and right on the, the driving knife. Right on the driving knife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you were a bit mm -hmm. cack-handed, you could still damage, damage the it. edge of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. It also means that you can cut very, very thin material without taking the guard off. Yeah, which always helps. Because mm -hmm. uh, I would never recommend taking the guard off for anything. No. 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 Your fingers and your eyes are far too important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. So, the battery, let's see, mm -hmm. anything from 2 amp to 12 amp, mm -hmm. just straight in there. Instant power button on there. Is that a Bluetooth? Uh, it's got one key on it. So is that so for the vacuum one, and things like that? Is it is a, a, a app based system. Right. On some tools, it will give you tool inventory. Okay. Uh, but it will also give you tool tracking on it as well. So if anybody pinches so it. If so if anyone steals it, you can locate it. Uh, and it's all based on a network of app users. Uh, so. I if wish you, a lot if, more companies would do that. If this was a, stolen from me, yeah. uh, and you had the app on your phone, and wherever someone was hiding that, you will pass within. Bluetooth distance of it. Yeah, it'll pick it up. It would pick you back on your app without you knowing it, yeah. knowing about it and tell me where it was. That's a fantastic yeah. idea. Update 
Uh, Not enough manuf more manufacturers need to do that. The yeah. tool theft is so rife at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's, it is. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's a good system. On some of our other tools, you can actually customise the settings on the tool. Okay. Using the, the, uh, the one key app as well. Oh, brilliant. So there's yeah. a, a few different ones, especially at impact wrenches. You can set each setting to your desired effect if, if you want to set it up for a specific job. So, so you don't you don't draw in too deep and that kind of stuff and take yeah. the head through past the board and all that. Yeah, yeah. So you've got one setting which would be your full power mode. Yeah. And then you've got three other settings that are mm -hmm. customizable. Yeah. Yeah. And that's pretty much on all of the hand tools, is it? Uh, not on all of them. It's only on a select range uh, at the moment. We're putting on more and more tools as we go along. Uh, but it's only within uh, uh, a certain amount of tools at the moment. It's a fairly new idea then, is it? Any, any ones that have one key on it, we also have non-one key versions of it. So if someone doesn't want to use one key, there's no point in paying that extra No, that's true. It. Yeah. So, uh, because every, every, every new feature comes with a cost, as you, yeah. as you know. But we try and lessen that cost as we go on. I think, so, as you listen. said, I think yeah. we should be including it as standard, because then it becomes the accepted standard. It does, yeah. Yeah, yeah the more, uh, more it gets on board and the more and people more see it and use it. And more start saying, well, if that's the standard, we have to go to that standard as well. And once the, the people that are misappropriating tools understand that they're not going to get away with it. This, they're not going to get away no. with it. There's mm. all, already been a few cases where a, our system and another company's system has helped locate thousands of tools that have been stolen because they've been looking for one tool. One, just looking for one just tool while they found tool. all the others. And because <laughs> they've located that tool, it's in a stash of other tools and the people have been uh, sent because of them. Brilliant. And it finds the owner as well afterwards. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's the biggest problem. I mean, uh, it, people like myself who buy a tool too eager to get using it, completely forget to write the serial number down and, and all the rest yeah. of it, and then the next thing you know, your back's turned and it's, it's gone, it's and gone. that's it, you never see it ever again. Yeah. Yeah, so on this one, it's a nice big switch. So it's a pull on mm. switch, so pull, just that off, and then just tap. And then just off. There's no, no start up, no slow down. Shuts down mm. within uh, one second. So Great. If you have to solve it very quickly, it will stop very, very, very quickly. Uh, so it's uh, another nice safety feature as well. My uh, my workshop's going to get rather full, I think. <laughs> you can never have too many tools. No, you can't. No, you <laughs> never can't. Have too many no, tools. no. You know, actually, one of the things I am looking to change is my chop saw, and okay. see so you got see so you got one right there. Okay. Which uh. which size do you use at the moment? Uh, I think it's a 225 blade. 225 blade, yeah. Uh, we do four mm. different sizes. We've got three mm. of them here today. We do uh, mm. four different sizes in our, mm. our cordless mic We do a 190, yeah. uh, a 216, a 254, and a 305. That's a big one, isn't it? That's yeah, the 305's yeah. right at the end. I'll, I'll, I'll let you have a look at that in yeah. a little bit of time. My favourite is the, the 190. Uh, the, this one right that, here, is it? My favourite, yeah, yeah. Because all I do is second fix. Right. Uh, I don't do a lot of mm. uh, first fix. No. Do you, so, well, you don't need to cut through big timbers it and. Gives me mm. everything I need, uh, but it's nice and compact and lightweight that I can mm. store it away, no problem whatsoever. Can we have uh, a look? Do you have yeah. a look at it? Let's have a look at it. <laughs> okay. I'll let you get. You've got. So, I'll, I'll just. Uh, no, I've not plugged it in just yet. The M18 FMS. Fuel miter so. Oh, uh, MFS. Fuel miter so. Fuel miter so. Yeah. Mm. Uh, 190 so, 190 mil blade. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you move up through range, you've got a 216, so it's a 216 mil blade. 254, which is a 254, and then the 305. Which is the big boy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and what the, what the difference in the blades will give you is a larger cross cut capacity, yeah. but also mm. a larger depth cut. Mm. Uh, so there's a lot of advantages to that. Small and compact is ideal for second fix, but you still have over 50 mil cutting capacity depth wise. So that's fine for your timbers, uh, isn't it, for when you're doing stuck work and that kind of yeah. stuff? And, stuff. Uh, and up to 250 mil cross cut, so okay. 10 inch cross yeah. cut. Uh, on that size of blade, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, you get full miter on it to both sides, so to the right hand side, it'll miter up to. Up to 48. Okay. And, yep. and the same 
same, same to the left hand side as well. Because we, we all know that no corners very Never rarely right. are yeah. corners 90, 90 degrees. You'll be lucky if it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So moving that about is just mm. quite simply pulling on that and moving it round. Can you lock it into position as well? Position by pushing down. Well, you can get it. It's got it's the certain positions for well, it. Yeah. But to lock it down, it's just case of pushing down on there, and then that won't physically move. Cool. Yeah. Conversely, if you're more into freestyling it, you can lock that facility off by doing that. So now that will just move wherever you want it to move. So if, if you're more into freestyle to move things about yeah. a lot easier, you can lock that off. And then to release it, it's just simply pull that again and it's locked back in place. Okay. That's really, so really. We have these positive de detents, say uh, key, uh, key angles. Yeah. Uh, to be yeah. used for uh, a lot of different things as well. So you've got preset at zero, preset at 45 on each side but we have uh, E10 in between. So that one's preset at just over 30 degrees. Yeah. Uh, that, included with your bevel, is good for cutting uh, the likes of coving and active yep. and like that. Uh, and then various different settings there as well. One key thing we have on here that some other brands don't have is it's a double bevel. A lot oh, so of we'll go only we'll bevel to the, to the left. What? Uh, ours will bevel both ways, so... Yeah, so the issue I've well, yeah. got with mine, it will, it will only go one one direction. So, always move the fence when bevel. Yep. Uh, that'll bevel right across to 45 degrees to this side. And going back to me, we've just got a release mechanism here. That it takes it all the other way, way well. once the guide's out of the way. Mm. Uh, again, if you're moving regularly from left to right to right to left uh, you can lock it out so by pulling that out and then just twisting it it's it extended so now we can bevel both ways so much nicer than having to try to think in your head which way you're going to turn the timber yeah. and and, yeah. and again to release that just twist that knob again and it, it slots back into place so whenever you bevel to the left to move, when you move back up, it will automatically stop lock. at zero, yeah. unless you physically interact with that, that switch as well. Okay. So, we'll look that off there. So, yeah. this uh, twist switch here will allow you to slide uh, the rails in and out to give you... A, a, a and then obviously lock, you lock it in yeah. where you if you need if, to. If you want to cut always at the fence, it's always better to keep it locked off. Yeah. Uh, but if you are doing a mixed variety, mm. you can leave it unlocked so you can you move back and forward. Yeah, so is it laser sight on this uh, or is it shadow? No, it's, sh it's yeah, shadow, shadow technology. Uh, we do it slightly different. We, we illuminate on both sides of the blade. Uh, so if the battery's in there, you'll notice there's an LED here. Bring the camera around to see him. <laughs> so we have an LED here and we also have an LED on this oh, side. On the other side. Well. Uh, and what that does is it gives you two lines, one either side that, that matches the blade. So it'll give you the bank dead centre of As you bring it down, they will show you exactly it's where you're cutting. It's, so it's a great great idea, the whole shadow yeah. technology, and yeah. uh, I don't know why it hasn't been used before. So. Uh, the, the company that brought it to the market had huge patents on it. That explains uh, it. Which is, I think, just coming to an end. Uh, so they use slightly different, they only use one LED, whereas we use two. two. Uh, but the one LED gives you yeah. a line straight down the blade. It's funny how that happens. I mean, it's, it's a, it was the multi-tool, wasn't it? For years and years, the company had a painting on it, and as yes. soon as it ran out, all of a sudden, everybody, everybody came out of him. It's such and, a brilliant invention, that. Though, the, and it? now they're just fighting to see who can get the, the quickest blade change on it. Uh, it's all star lock now, yeah. quick release, and yeah. 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 And uh, vibration, the least amount of vibration on those yes. two as well. Yes, yeah. uh, I noticed I had a player of yours that I've turned it on, it's put it on to 12, and it's like, I can barely feel it. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> hey, uh -huh. Other thing that I really mm. like about these saws is they're so, much, so light and so easy to move about. Uh, and they <laughs> come with these built in handles to them. Yeah, saws, so notice those. A, bed. a nice feel on those. Uh, they, they feel nice and robust, so when you release the, the clamps, 
and you lift that off, obviously we'll look this down first. There we go. It's then nice and easy to transport about. So you can carry it about nice and easy. It doesn't look very heavy at all, that. There's only just over 20 kilograms in weight in there. Is that all? Yeah. Wow. You want a few? Yeah. Use my good arm. <laughs> yeah. So you, you can carry it that way, but you can also we'll carry grab, it by grab the that top way. handle as well. It's really well balanced, isn't it? It's balanced, yeah. Mm. Yeah, last thing you want to do is probably carrying that around and it's swinging around in your arms, do you? Yeah. Um, when you put that on, it's just going to catch on the front edges. Yep. And then push them down. And that's locked in place. And I, I see you've got a different bench on here, so I guess these plates at the bottom are, you can change them over because they look like they're these, bolted on. These come supplied with the. Oh, with the. With, with the. Uh, the I can't leg think stand. of the code either. They, they come with the legs. <laughs> I, I knew exactly what I was talking yeah. about. Just sometimes you get brain freeze. You do, don't you? Yeah. Uh, so the, the right brackets come with the leg stand, uh, but these can change between any, any, of, any of the tools. Yeah. You've got the rucksacks. <clears throat> now, the only problem I find is that when you've got a rucksack with these many compartments in it, you can't lift the sodding thing because you put too many tools in it. Not that any of us could ever have too many tools. Cool bag. Don't think we need that this time of year. Mind you, it's always nice to have a cold beer at the end of the day. Totes. I do like totes. Everything's just open. You can just grab what you need there and then. When you finish with it, just throw it straight back in again. Lovely and handy. And again, it's got the pack out connectors on there so you just you can clip it all in together and you've got the giant crates out here at the bottom here again everything just clips in on, on there first time I've seen one of these in the open actually I've seen them on magazines and on the internet but it's actually quite quite large I have to admit my own personal ones I've got my drill bits in these um, and the ones that are twice the size I saw just a second ago I've got screws in them in my version of this that I've got, this, um, this half pack out here, I've got my chop saw because it's the perfect size for it. Whereas this one, this size here, I've got my combi drill and my impact driver. The world's your oyster when it comes to these boxes, so you can put in what you want. They're so modular, They're excellent, excellent piece of kit. What you find with yeah. the 254 is you suddenly get... It's jumped up a, a bit. Features, nice, nice. Uh, they, they yeah. come on here. So, we were saying a bit about blade lock earlier on, so we now have this blade lock here, which means that you can see now that that, that blade's locked in place. So I can release it on this side with the key, to and then just the blade, blade over. Uh, and then once you've changed the blade over, just simply release that again, and off it goes. And the blade's free to move. Right. Okay, we still have the, uh, the same feature with the, uh, the shadow cut. So we still have the, the, the LEDs signal, underneath. LEDs yeah. underneath here. Uh, the bevel function works on this slightly different. So if we bring this down to here, the bevel lock now works on this one here. That's a nice big lever, isn't it? So that's it locked completely, it won't move yeah. either way. If you put it to here, it, it just makes it nice and easy to just pull it one slight one to manoeuvre it any way you want. Oh, brilliant. And that'll move. Whichever direction you want. Either side. There's no other mm. locking mechanism here. Just in one, one just system. Just one, yeah. So much more convenient, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Uh, what we've also done with this as well, uh, compared with the, uh, the 190 and the 305, is the, the sliding rails are actually internal. So the slide then underneath the bed. That keeps it nice and tidy, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, it also means that when you're transporting it, it is nice and it is very, very, very nice and compact and compact, yes. Yeah. So again just lock mm -hmm. it off and move it to the side and it becomes very compact and easy to transport about. Again it just unclips and you can lift it off yeah. and a bit heavier in weight. 
uh, yeah. but because it's a, a bigger machine as well. So uh, the, the, the slider all, rails in the back there, they've got like a, um, like a brush around it as well just to stop all the rubbish the, from being pulled inside, in? Yes, yeah. It's always good to give them a clean off. Uh, yeah. Each time you use it, yeah. because it saves any any build up. If you if you do get this on there, just with uh, residue of the lubricant that's on them, mm -hmm. it can it, can it just sticks, start stick, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one thing I have found on my saw actually, because obviously being just a domestic DIY one, and it's just stuck in the garage. It's that the the arms have actually started to rust. Yeah. But I think that's obviously down to moisture and my lack of maintenance. <laughs> But, I mean, are, are these stainless, these ones? Uh, you know, uh, the runners themselves are, are, are stainless steel. They are stainless, yeah. they're, they're stainless. Uh, mm -hmm. And they, they are lubricated mm. to a certain, certain degree as well. Mm. Uh, and the, it's ball bearings that are in here, it's not just guide bearings. It is, oh, great. It's ball so. bearings, so it, it, it means that it, it, it's a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. Can I have a go? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. Says, where's the uh, ah, that would help. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really smooth. You can hear the ball bearings actually kind of working in there. Uh, also... I like the little safety trigger on the on the handle as well. It's got to be a three step maneuver. Yeah, there is a nice other trick on this as well. When you, your rails are set to where you want to go, yeah. if you're doing repetitive cuts. You've also got a locking switch here. Okay, so if I pull that forward, try and bring it up forward now. It'll oh, that's great. A certain point. Yeah. Okay. And again, just by releasing that. And, it, and there it comes again. Go anywhere you want what's, to the, what's the uh, little lever here for? Uh, that's for doing partial cuts. Oh, so you can stop, it's got sometimes, a stop. Yeah, the sometimes gauge. if you're yeah, doing right. joints, yeah. you don't want to go all the way through the timber. So by flipping this over and combination with this. Here, when you now bring that down, it will yeah, stop at a certain it'll point. Go so far. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. you can do lights of lap, mm. lap joints, cross cuts, uh, uh, mm. uh, half lap joints, uh, where you want bits of timber to fit in together. It's Very not versatile, the isn't it? Ideal scenario, but it yeah. takes a bit of practice to get it done right. Yeah, and you always have to remember to run through, don't you? Obviously, you end up with the curve of the blade yeah. in there. And, and if you're going down very low, uh, always use a, a sacrificial piece back here. Yeah. Because if not, you get the curvature of the blade at the back. So, so you can run. Yeah. But those who well. know, know, don't they? Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, but it's, yeah. A, it's the next yeah. one. It's not a feature mm. that a lot of people will use all the time, but it's an excellent feature to have. Mm. I've used it quite a lot myself, actually, at yeah. home for, for various things. So. Okay. Cool. Uh, nice. And never underestimate the fact that the, uh, the the guard is actually a clear guard as well. It means you can see what's happening. Always helps. Yeah. Always helps. That's no one. Yeah. And that's Especially if you're hard of hearing or anything like that as well. You can, you can see the blade still spinning or if you've got something stuck can, in it. Or. You can always make sure that uh, you can see the blade without getting too close or leaning around it yeah. as well. Uh, so you can actually see that it's still in the cut line that you want it to be in. Mm. Uh, mm. As with all of our machines, we have the dust extraction port at the back here. Uh, this will re remove all the breathable dust from the cup. Yeah. Uh, not all the debris, because there will still be debris falls down, but it will take all the breathable dust away. All the harmful dust that you'd normally breathe in. Do more could do an uh, L class? Is it L, L, M class? We, we, do, we don't do M class in yeah. cordless uh, vacuums, but we do it in mm. a, a, a corded one. Corded one. A, the only classification we do in our cordless ones is the L class. So no, I think a lot of sites are trying to push towards yes. the M, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh. we don't have an M class available at the moment. Uh, I'm sure they'll come soon, though, aren't they? If, uh, as the industry demands it, I'm sure it'll get built. <laughs> So this will be the big boy then. Uh, I oh, guess the then we finally move up to the, yeah. uh, the 305. It gives you all the facilities on the other two units, but it gives you more cutting capacity. This will give you all the features of the, the previous machines, just on a bigger Big scale. scale. Uh, so it's a 305 mil blade on here, so it'll give you up to a 14 inch cut by four inches deep. <laughs> You're almost talking sleepers then, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, sleepers, no problem whatsoever, it's got the power to do all, all of those. Uh, one feature 
I didn't mention on the, the previous two, uh, but I will talk about on here, is if you notice how the, the blade is mounted on here, you've got a flat edge here. So that's limiting your maximum. Okay, cut, yes, I went, yeah. Uh, your depth of cut mm. on the cross cut. But you notice there's a recess here up at the back. Oh, so you can do it deeper means cuts you're of. You're cutting thinner material, but it's taller. Mm. Uh, but you need to keep cut it in the upright position so it likes off skip boats. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or architrave and things like mm -hmm. that. If you're using uh, white ones, it can be cut on this area here. So you can, you can actually get up just to... Just push the saw back and then just yeah. bring it straight down. You can get up to nearly a six inch mm. cut on there uh, just by cutting on the, the back of the blade. You will only get up across, uh, I think it's 22 mil uh, okay. of cutting capacity. Mm. So not a wide cross cut. Mm. But it, but it does help to actually yeah. see where you're, you're cutting, doesn't it, rather than the flip it over and then... Yeah, yeah. yeah. so you, you can yeah. cut a, a lot more capacity mm. across mm. that small area. That's a really good idea. Really, they thought about that, didn't they? Yeah. I've talked to another couple of features on this one that are also on the 254, but not on the, the 190. So... On this one that goes back to the same bevel as the 190, so you've got automatic bevel to the left hand side, but you have the safety feature of not being able to bevel to the right, yeah. unless you specifically ask it to. So again, we're using a, a close, what we see, a, a crow's foot a spindle here to release. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I can see the, it's got a degree cut on them. We also have yeah. the, the, the lock here as well, so it will bevel automatically to the left or right, uh, to the, the left, but to go to the right, again, we have to pull, You're pull it back out again to release it. As well. Now, if you were uh, noticeable, if it was noticeable up there, you notice that it's only went as far across as 22 and a half. 22 and a half. Yeah. Because on both the 254 and the 305, we have these positive salts. Oh, that's cool. So awesome. these are preset angles, 22.5. Yeah. And uh, on that one, 33.9. So uh, you just open it up and it allow you to bring it all the way over. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But also, if we're going, if we're taking them off, so locking them off at the moment so that we aren't using them, We've also got these as well. So at the moment, that will be preset at a uh, 45. Oh, so you can just wind the bolt into yep. the exact angle that you want to get it to. Yes. Yeah. So at the moment, that will go right over, and it will stop on 45. Yeah. If I was to move that arm on this side, if I move that out. It'll no, now go past 45, it'll go to 47. Because so again, you don't get the corners, do you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And same with this one, mm -hmm. if we were coming back over and be able to the left hand side, it'll again, go past that, the zero. That'll, that'll go to a 47 degree as well. Okay? But again, pushing them back in mm -hmm. will mean that it'll almost stop at that 45. Any adjustments you need, need to do for your angles, you can do here and here. Uh, there's a multitude of uh, adjustments and I would always recommend anyone that buys a bite saw should always check the squares. Oh, always, when, every when time. They, when they get yeah. here. Uh, most manufacturers, they will be square out of the box. But, but your blade might not be as well. <laughs> that's, that's another thing uh, as well. Things can happen in transit, so it's always best to check yeah. uh, the, uh, the squares straight out of the box. They really have thought about what goes into the design of these tools, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, they have. And, and, so, and with all of them, so safety is paramount, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah. Does this one come with that, with the Bluetooth system as well? Uh, yeah. This one uh, doesn't have Bluetooth on it at the moment. Uh, the, there are models available that it does no. have, but this one, this one here doesn't have it available. But they do basically the same machine, but with the addition yeah. of it, yeah. if you wanted it. Yeah. So you've got a choice with or without. Cool. Great. Well, thank okay. you very much for your time. No.